All right, welcome to a conversation with a community leader sponsored by Leadership Gets Up. I'm your host, Carrie Bozeman, and I'm the former mayor of Bremerton and Bellevue, Washington. And my guest today is Monica Blackwood. Good morning, Monica. Good morning, good Carrie. How are you? I'm good. And Monica, I, I think I have your title right. You are the president and CEO of West Sound Workforce. Correct. Right? Yes. Yeah, really, we're going to talk a lot about West Sound Workforce today. <laughs> but before we do that, a little bit about you personally, Monica, what brought you to Kitsap County? I don't know, maybe you're a native, uh, but what brought you here um, to do this work? I am a native of Kitsap. I grew up oh. in the house my mom grew up in, in Indianola. Of oh my gosh. So <laughs> Kitsap has always been home for me. I'll be darned. Do you have brothers and sisters that live here? Um, I have a brother that lives in Fort Angeles and a sister that lives in Yakima. Oh, yeah. do your parents still live in Indianola? Yep, my mom still lives in that same house and we go and visit often and spend good quality time on the beach. <laughs> well, that's a great place to live. What do you do, Monica, when you're not doing the multitude of tasks that I know you do? Uh, <laughs> what do you do when you're not working? When I'm not working, I have uh, a couple of volunteer roles um, with Olympic College Foundation, which I know you're familiar with, Carrie, as well as yeah. um, the Kitsap Economic Development Alliance and our local Washerma chapter um, for HR uh, here in the in the um, Kitsap area. And I'm also very active with all the activities that my kids um, keep me active in for their sanity and leisure. Um, and I just love spending time with family and traveling. I love to travel. Well, you where are some of your favorite places before we get into your work? <laughs> um, I, um, let's see, one of, uh, some of my memorable trips have been to Fiji and uh, to Iceland and wow. uh, most recently to Paris with um, with my kids and my husband. It had been their first time um, going there and my second time. And so it was wonderful to experience their culture um, through the eyes of my kids and, and whatnot. So, yeah. Well, you couldn't uh, go to two opposite places to see or Iceland. <laughs> I know. <laughs> which, if you could only go to one of those, which would you go to? Mm, I, I I don't know. I'm I'm really all about going to as many places as I can. And it yeah. really depends on the purpose of the trip. How are you and your family coping with the period of time we're in called COVID-19 these days? You know, uh, we went from going 90 miles an hour to like a screeching halt with uh, all of our kids' activities. They play select sports. They're in extracurricular um, destination imagination groups. Um, play musical instruments and so forth. And so it was a very fast transition. Um, you know, having siblings in the house cooped up together for so long um, is the typical sibling experience where they, they get on each other's nerves, but they do love each other. And, um, and they- How old, are they? How old are they? They're eighth grade and sixth grade now. Oh. And, um, and they're in the Spanish immersion program. Um, through Bremerton School District. And um, they've realized that having a sibling during these times has also been a blessing because they had somebody to do things with, as well as, you know, the typical sibling rivalry uh, thing. <laughs> well, it's changed all our life. My wife is working out of the home. She works for the Nordstrom Corporation and they've been home for, uh, oh, I don't know, four, since March. Mm -hmm. So, and, and no tell when they're, the management people are gonna be back. So. We're living in a we're living in a difficult time, but the key is to stay safe and do the right thing and yep. all that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. uh, talking about your professional career in this community, and it's been pretty interesting. One of your roles is you were the president, I think, of the board of the Kitsap Economic Development Alliance. Correct. Uh, what was that experience like for you, and what what do you think got accomplished when you were on the board of the alliance? Uh, that was. Um, that was a very interesting experience for me. It was a great opportunity and I'm so thankful that I had it. It happened to coincide with the same exact time that I purchased West Sound Workforce. And so I had, you know, all hands on and everything in my life at that moment because I was making this huge transition professionally 
I was transitioning into the into the lead uh, position for the board for KEDA. Um, we were able to accomplish a couple of things um, in that um, we developed um, a, a more diverse board. We're still working on that, um, but we've been able to bring in um, more small business representation on the board, um, more diversity in many, many ways. Um, and again, we're still working on that, but, um, but it's been an exciting two years. And, and now we're getting ready to uh, hire a new executive director because John is retiring in just a few more weeks. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I, John Powers is an old friend of mine and uh, uh, he brought a interest, he brought an interesting dynamic to the board that it, it needed, Absolutely. I think. Yes. Um, what's your impression of what John brought to the board during his tenure? I think he was there almost 10 years, wasn't he? Yeah, it's been nine years. And one of the things um, that I am so thankful that he brought was stability because I know that that organization had been in some turmoil and had seen um, leaders come and go quite a bit in the years prior to John joining. Um, so he brought that stability, which was fantastic. He brought in, um, he brings still an incredible energy and um, excitement about um, Kitsap and being here in Kitsap and being with um, living here and being a business owner here and um, workforce development here and, and so forth. He's just an incredible cheerleader for our county and um, and everything that goes into economic development in that way. So yeah, on Kitsap, right? Isn't that what he That's says right. all the time? Every time on Kitsap. Um, well, I agree with you. I've watched Kitsap Economic Development Council here for years and years and I sometimes question whether or not they were making a difference or not. Uh, but when John came, I agree with you. He kind of brought some stability and lots of energy. Yep. As we all know, John's a high energy person. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think really got the ship right. And I think that the, the, the organization's in pretty good shape right now. Uh, any, any idea when they're going to make a decision about hiring a new person? Um, I would expect that to be in the next month. Huh? Yeah. Um, and John's leaving on the 15th. Uh, what do you think? I don't see John as a retired person. What do you think <laughs> you'll end up? What do you think John will end up doing? On a you know, he recently told me that he has a couple of different ideas um, as to what uh, the next chapter is going to look like in his life and whether or not they're here um, physically in Kitsap or if they're in a different area because he has family all over the place. Um, and then is just, um, you know, now using remote ways to um, continue to impact kids up in uh, ways that he thinks is, is important. Um, so there are a couple of different avenues that I know he has up his sleeve. Oh, you're going you're to try to have a virtual goodbye for John? Uh, yes, the, the, um, the board is looking at um, hosting something for him. Well, he'll be missed, but I'm sure he'll stay around and we'll get to see him. And yeah. I'll have a glass of wine with him on the deck one of these nights. There we go. Um, one of the good things, Mayor of uh, Spokane, when I was Mayor of Bellevue. Yes. So we, we ran across each other many times, often. What um, are your other, so you were the president, you were the president of the board of KEDA, which is a big organization, big board. Mm -hmm. um, um, so you got a lot accomplished there. Before that, though, you worked for uh, one of our most respected firms in town, Rice Fergus Miller. Yes, I did. Uh, what, how long were you there and what did you do for Rice Fergus Miller? Rice Fergus Miller, I was there for almost 18 years. Wow. Uh, it was an incredible company, still is an amazing company, and I have the utmost respect for everybody there. Um, I started out as their first full-time marketing person um, back in the early 2000s and uh, watched the organization grow, um, bring on new, new employees, bring in new work um, of all different industries and types. Um, have, and the thing that I'm really excited about still is uh, the, the impact that RFM has on the community and um, just the way that they um, enact their values and beliefs throughout um, their work and throughout the, the um, efforts that they have 
in the community is just really impressive and I and I um, and I respect that greatly. So, so were you all always in the marketing? I suppose some of that was business recruitment too. Yes, yep, uh, marketing and business development. Um, while I was there, I ended up um, getting my master's degree um, oh. from Amberton University. Um, it's an MBA with a focus in strategic leadership. Um, took that, grew the position a little bit more, took on some of the um, more administrative um, aspects, um, including some compliance, HR um, uh, regulations and so forth then grew that to more talent acquisition, um, as well as um, a number of other things, and um, just continued to grow my position and my professional life there, um, all the way up to becoming a principal and a, a, a minority shareholder with the organization. Wow. So, that, yeah. that must have been a hard decision to leave them. It was a very difficult decision, yes. Um, one of the things about RFM, is that, um, and especially Steve, um, is that there's there's such a, a pride that goes into, um, or a level of pride that goes into being um, an entrepreneur, right? And they encourage that in all of the employees. And um, one of the things is, is that, you know, sometimes that leads people outside of the RFM walls in my case, it did as well. Um, but they are so incredibly supportive of individuals who um, take that spirit and, and move on to other things, whether or not it's within RFM or, or outside, so, yeah. Well, they start, I'm pretty familiar with them also. Uh, yeah. they start, I think they started out in Bremerton with four employees. Uh, like yeah, well, and Steve and Dave and Greg Belding were the first three, and then Ed was in there too. So, yep. Yeah, and they've grown to I don't know now fifty employees maybe. They're right around fifty, um, I think. Now, when I when I left two and a half years ago, they were about fifty five. So yeah. I remember when I was mayor of Bremerton, and they were always looking for a new site uh -huh. to build a new, to build a building. They looked right? at them. I might, my gosh, they looked at the library, the old library. Yes. They looked at the post office. Yeah. And I kept hoping, I didn't want them to move out of town. Right. Because I knew they were up and mer emerging firm. And uh, so we kept looking and hoping. And my gosh, they decided to buy the old Sears building <laughs> and build this just dramatically right. beautiful, wonderful, uh, what do you call these low energy impact buildings? Yeah, the lead um, buildings. And still today, and they built it with this. Uh, if you go into the atrium of their building, it's it's a it's a community meeting place. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they've been so smart. Yep. About using it for that. Agreed. And, and allowing other people to use it. So it's just a, you know, in the end, them building their own building at that location was um, it couldn't have worked out better. It was great. Yeah, so, it was. Um, one of the things, you know, my first week there back in 2001, I remember being asked, what is it that you would want in a new workspace? Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, um, that was that was in 2001. And then finally, 10 years later, roughly, we had our new space. And, um, and that was pretty exciting. And for them to do that in the middle of the financial downturn, of, yes. you know, 08, 09, because um, they opened up the building in, in 2011. Let's talk about you leaving Rice Fergus Miller, which was a great job you had, to go with a company called West Sound Workforce. Yeah. What's the mission of West Sound Workforce? West Sound Workforce is, um, is really, our line is that we're where great people and great companies meet, um, because that is really what we strive to do here is take individuals who have a great set of skills and match them up with an organization that has a need and make sure that that's a good fit. It's not just about putting in somebody to do a job, but it's making sure that there's a great fit there uh, so that the individual can succeed, the company can, see, can succeed, which then also means that the family succeeds and our community succeeds, right? Because it all flows in together. Um, are you a recruiting company? You recruit? 
Uh, we are a staffing agency. So yes, we do recruit. Um, we recruit for direct hire positions, especially if they're um, uh, management level or above. Um, and we also do um, temp to hire positions and just um, you know temporary positions, whether or not somebody um, or an organization has somebody going on um, on a vacation for a week or two and they need somebody to fill in, we can we can include that. Um, or is there are there certain kinds of jobs you recruit for at, at West Sound Workforce? Or are you doing mostly uh, uh, temporary cl clerical kind of stuff? So we have a couple of a couple of industries that we are um, specialized in: office um, and um, and uh, accounting um, being one of them, as well as um, more light industrial, so some manufacturing. Um, and uh, labor positions. Uh, and then we do quite a bit actually of more um, executive level recruitment and direct hires um, for companies. We act as um, an extended arm of their HR department and their recruiting um, teams so that we're out there with an extra set of eyes and some additional resources to be able to help those organizations um, find the talent that they need. Um, and meanwhile, we also um, act as kind of um, another ear from an HR perspective because all of our recruiters are HR professionals and they've practiced in, um, in the HR world um, holistically, not just talent acquisition. And so they're up to date on um, policies and regulations and all of that. So we can sit with somebody on the phone and help them kind of devise a plan of an HR issue that they might be um, uh, facing at the moment at the moment if people are unemployed do they contact you absolutely um, and like actually you know just earlier today we were doing a virtual um, job fair uh, with um, the uh, uh, Port Orchard Chamber of Commerce um, we do virtual job fairs with um, uh, the local work source Kitsap office um, we did them all in person before COVID, but um, have been pretty instrumental in being able to switch over um, to virtual affairs. Um, and so we do a lot of recruitment with our um, work source contacts um, as well. Uh, what kind of skill sets are you normally looking for in an employee? Uh, we are looking um, for a, a huge range. Um, obviously, you know, we've got labor and entry level positions for individuals. Uh, we have um, office and bookkeeping um, and accounting level positions, and we have um, we have um, some manufacturing positions that are higher level, um, supervi supervisory level uh, positions. Um, so having a background in um, you know plating technologies or whatnot um, does help um, with those positions. But really, um, and it, and you hear it all the time, and it and it hasn't changed. We are looking for people that are reliable and dependable, can show up, um, contribute to an organization, um, and, and be able to um, have those soft skills um, that are needed. And especially now with, um, in, our, um, in our new COVID reality, um, having uh, skills with agility and flexibility and critical thinking um, really does help a lot too. Are there job opportunities out there in Kitsap County? Are there, there, what's, there what's are the job potential. situation? There are quite a bit of opportunities that are available for people. And we have probably 70 positions that we're recruiting for right now um, wow. throughout Kitsap and Pierce County. Uh, so what, what kind of pay scale are you seeing out there? I'm sure it's mostly hourly, but what, what does that look like? So we have quite a quite a bit hourly that range from minimum wage of thirteen fifty an hour um, to fifteen dollars an hour, even twenty to twenty five dollars an hour, depending on um, on the position and the skill set, of course. And then we do have uh, salary positions as well. So, yeah. You do any work with the shipyard? We don't directly do work with the shipyard. We do have a couple of um, client companies that we work with that are um, contractors with the shipyard and we, um, we do work with them. I'm trying to um, figure out and learn the ropes on how to make sure that we are able to badge employees, not just rely on our, um, on our client companies, but um, that's you know, in the works and it's, 
it's quite a process to figure out. <laughs> so uh, the job market's good in Kitsap County right now. It, are, would you say, would it be fair to say that it's harder to find people than it is to find the jobs? It are is. More jo are there more jobs than there are people looking for jobs? There are currently. Um, and it's really funny because that was the situation we were in pre-COVID where we couldn't find enough people to fill jobs. Um, and we've been able to kind of remedy that a little bit in some ways, but then there are now other job, other types of jobs that are more difficult to fill than, than um, pre-COVID. And it's interesting because, um, you know, even with the amount of temporary layoffs and some of those layoffs turning into more permanent uh, uh, layoffs and people being able to um, enter the job market in different roles than they had been previously, um, we are still seeing quite a few people that um, that don't want to work right now or or can't work, honestly, for very valid reasons. Right now, we've got, you know, the school year just started and people are trying to balance how to take care of their families in a remote school from home situation um, and figure out how to work at the same time. And that's really difficult right now. Monica, what do you think the big uh, impact is going to be of COVID in terms of people working from home from now on? Well, there's been quite a bit of um, statistical. Um, Even after COVID's over. On that, sure. Um, you know, they're saying that now more than 50% um, of individuals will have the ability to work from home. Um, as opposed to it being, you know, in the upper 20s or the or, uh, low 30s um, prior to COVID. Um, but it's really interesting how, uh, how COVID has created a paradox of technology and humanity um, because we're trying to figure out how to remain human in this very tech world and yes. integrating the two things. So, um, so there's, there's still a lot for us to figure out um, as as workforce development goes um, in, in what that would look like in the future. Yeah, I think for most companies, they're gonna, they're gonna be measuring the effectiveness of whether or not they can, an employee can still remain effective working yes. from home yes. uh, versus buying more office space or renting more office space for yep. employees. And the, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the, you know, uh, I think the measure of it will be what, per, what people have to be in the office. Mm -hmm. for the organization to be able to run and, and work well. And what people don't have to be in the office that can, that can uh, do their business. What about the issue of discipline and putting in your eight hours when you're working out of home? I would guess there's a temptation uh, because you're home, maybe to get distracted and those sort of things. What, I know uh, that happens to me. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, and that is, you know, there, there are um, quite a few things that have happened that have evolved out of these last six months where people have been working with respect to um, employee tracking of productivity, right? Um, right? And, and how that all works and which metrics are appropriate and which ones aren't. And it's really kind of interesting because you're finding um, not just from the productivity standpoint of employees getting things done, but you're also learning more about um, the individual employee. And you can have an employee that is incredibly effective um, at, at getting um, work done and tasks completed and whatnot um, between 7 and 9 a.m. And then you see kind of the, the fall off because that's their, that's their productivity height, right? And then you see other individuals who are way more um, apt at getting their stuff done between 7 and 9 p.m. at night. And so it's creating this interesting paradox where we can start looking at how we shift our workloads and, and we shift our, um, um, our, our roles so that we can customize them a little bit more to see more success out of our employees. Well, as much as Zoom is fun to do, uh, <laughs> I'd still rather be in a conference room with a bunch of my fellow workers 
trying right. to figure out how to solve problems. I don't think Zoom, uh, I don't think people are as free to talk, and say what's on their mind when they're on a Zoom screen. Mm -hmm. I don't think it leads to real, uh, what I want to say, not problem solving, but uh, just good discussion about, about how to, you know, how to run the company. So I'm hoping we find that there's a happy medium there that we can find right. and get, get back in there talking to each other and discussing issues and challenges with the company. I don't think it's, you, you see as much of that on Zoom as you would be, if we were still face to face. Yeah. So that's yeah. my opinion. Um, it's a bit limiting still. It is. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple of predictions. It looks like I've been reading in the New York Times that communities like Bremerton, uh, Kitsap County are going to see a lot of growth in the next 20 years. Some people are going to be leaving the big cities for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, some of them because of the turmoil that they're having, the political turmoil, mm -hmm. cost of living, all that kind of thing. And I've always felt pretty strongly that we're going to see Pretty steady, significant growth over here. Are you seeing that in the workforce here? You know, I'm seeing it a lot in um, in the professional workforce, where um, individuals in the IT sectors and uh, organizations that that allow and thrive in more of the remote working environment um, definitely happening, and you see. You see people moving over from Seattle to Kitsap and beyond. You know, we saw it before this. Now we're seeing a bigger influx of it. Well, the real, estate, the real estate market's really difficult right now. There's not enough homes. So, okay. hey, listen, Monica, we're getting close to the end of our wonderful conversation yeah. about workforce. Uh, you've been a leader of a lot of organizations. What would you, how would you describe your leadership style? Uh, I I hope that I am a very collaborative leader. I like to um, throw ideas out there, get as much um, information that I can um, in a reasonable time. It's not a it's not an information paralysis by any means, but I want to have smarter brains around me um, and folks in the trenches so that I can get the best viewpoints possible uh, to be able to make decisions. And I can't do that without a fantastic team. You know, one of the two keys I've always found in my life, professional life, was I, I learned to be a pretty good listener mm -hmm. uh, and to ask questions. Right. But if you and I went to lunch, I, just like we're doing now, I, I'd hope by the end of the lunch, I'd know a lot more about you than I knew before. <laughs> so those, and they, it held me in pretty good stead, especially if you're going to lunch with somebody pretty smart that right. can help you figure things out. So absolutely you're a good listener and asking a lot of questions. <laughs> absolutely. So, something that is always tell me a good student. Listen, I've enjoyed our conversation. You're someone I've admired Thank throughout you. my career here. Uh, you're a difference maker. Mm -hmm. I know you're a uh, I know being a mom and a wife and all the things that you do, the multiple tasks you do every day and still run a successful company. I salute you. Thank you. I congratulate you and stay in good health, my friend. Me and, too. and thank you for being with me. Thank so you. So that will be our conversation with a community leader. I'm Kerry Bozeman, and we'll see you next time on another conversation with another community leader. Leadership Kitsap is our community's civic leadership program. Leadership Kitsap fosters and empowers educated, prepared, and engaged community leaders. For over 25 years, we have cultivated leaders that work collaboratively to create positive change, dedicated to making our community a better place to work and live. We expose our class to Kitsap's leaders across public, private, and nonprofit sectors. We are happy to bring many of the conversations with these leaders to you. Strong leaders build strong communities. Thank mm -hmm. you.